Dear students, welcome to the 8th online class of Control System Engineering. In last class, we studied how to find transfer function for system with gears having gear drain and gears with losses. Then we started electromechanical system. In this, we studied, in this, we studied about a DC motor. How to find transfer function for a DC motor, its mechanical load analysis, and its dynamometer test. Now we'll start lecture 8. Dear students, by the end of this lecture, we will cover final two objectives of modeling in frequency domain. This lecture covers analogous behavior of electrical and mechanical circuit. We will study how to linearize a nonlinear system in order to find its transfer function. Its transfer function. Students, contents of this lecture are We will start with electric circuits analog. In this, we will study about series analog and then parallel analog. Then we will study about nonlinearities and linearization process. Dear students, so far in this chapter we have studied electrical systems and mechanical systems. Now we will start electric circuit analog. In this we will demonstrate that how the mechanical system we have studied can be represented equivalent electric circuit. If you look at the figure in this passive linear components of electrical network and that of translational mechanical components are given. In electrical networks we know that capacitor and inductor are energy storage where resistor is energy dissipating element. In translational mechanical network spring and inertia are energy storage element where a viscous damper is energy dissipating element. We have studied equations for both system. Now we will analyze that variable of electric circuits behave exactly as the analogous variables of mechanical systems. Using this commonality, we will produce electric circuit equivalent for mechanical system. Students, now we will start formally electric circuit analogs. An electric circuit that is analog to a system from another discipline like mechanical system is called an electric circuit analog. Which means that we will having an electric circuit which will represent a system from another discipline like it can be translational mechanical system or a rotational mechanical system. And this is done because the analogous behavior of variables is same. This can be done by comparing the equations defining, defining dynamics of the system. Like if we have an electric circuit, we will find out equation for that. And second, we have a mechanical system. And we will find out equation for that system too. Then we will make comparison of the variables. And with this comparison, we will make our desired analog electric circuit. Electric circuit analogs are of two types. First is series analog and second is parallel analog. If mesh equations are compared with equation of system from system from another discipline is known as series analog. When nodal equations of electrical network are compared with Equations of system from another discipline is known as parallel analog. Students, now we will study series analog. If you look at the figure, we have two systems. Figure A represent simple translational mechanical system where figure B shows desired electrical representation of mechanical system. system. 
for system in figure a equation of motion is represented in laplace domain if we apply kvl at figure b its mesh equation is also highlighted here both equations are not directly analogous to analogous to each other because displacement and currents are not analogous student now we will develop analog behavior by converting displacement into velocity and for this we will divide and multiply left hand side of translational mechanical system equation by laplace operator s now we can make, now we can make comparison of both equation and this comparison will be done with the power of laplace operator s now our desired electric circuit analog is represented in figure c where figure d shows analogous behavior of electrical and mechanical and mechanical components in this mass m is represented by inductor so their analogous behavior is same a viscous damper rho v is represented by a resistor a spring is represented by connected by capacitor with capacitance equal 1 over k farads force applied to the system is represented by source voltage and velocity of translational mechanical system is represented by mesh current so with this so with this by analogously comparing the behavior of various component we have make an equivalent electric circuit analog of our translational mechanical now we will study how to make electric series analog of a system from another discipline who is defined by more than one equation or degree of freedom is greater than 1 for example for example in figure a translational mechanical system is given with degree of freedom equals to and we have two points of motion first is x1 and second is x2 now for equivalent series and for equivalent series analog we will be having two mesh in the circuit and all the impedances that are connected with m1 will appear in first mesh all the impedances those are connected with m2 will occur will occur in second mesh and all the impedances that are common between m1 and m2 will occur in series form common to both mesh students now if you look at the figure m1 is directly connected with directly connected with spring with coefficient k1 surface friction represented by rho v1 and applied force f of t so these quantities will occur in first loop m2 is directly connected with spring with coefficient k3 its surface friction with coefficient rho v2 and these quantities will occur in second mesh where the components common between the motion of m1 and m2 are a spring with coefficient k2 and a viscous damper with coefficient rho v3 rho v3 these will occur in series and will be common to the both meshes now we will start dear students as we know that this system is example of translational mechanical system we have studied earlier and from there we will use dynamic equation for the system now for making analog we will convert displacement into velocity by multiplying and dividing left side of both equations by laplace operator s and this will give us our desired equation for comparison and from this equation we will form our desired series analog circuit
dear student now as we have converted equation of system into desired form now we will make electric analog circuit as said all the impedances which are connected directly to the motion of first test point will occur in will occur in first loop in this case spring with coefficient k1 surface friction with coefficient rho v1 were connected with mass m1 these three quantities will appear in appear in first mesh also externally applied force is acting on mass m1 so it will also appear in first loop in the form of voltage source represented by f of t the velocity of first test point will be represented as mesh 1 current v1 of t now for second test point or second loop objects associated with m2 are a spring or a spring with coefficient k3 surface friction with coefficient rho v2 and its mass m2 these three quantities will appear in second mesh now the components common between m1 and m2 m1 and m2 which includes a spring with coefficient k2 a viscous damper with coefficient rho v3 these will appear in the form of series common to the both meshes and with this our this our desired series analog of mechanical system will be formed students next topic we have is parallel analog for the system in given figure a we will make a parallel analog as represented in figure b now for the same system we have equation of motion in terms of velocity from the last example example for system in figure b we will apply nodal law and find out nodal equation for this parallel rlc circuit dear students now we will compare quantities of both equation corresponding to the power of laplace operator s and form our desired circuit as represented in figure c of this slide upon comparison we conclude that put that mass m of translational mechanical system in terms of nodal circuit can be represented with a capacitor with capacitance equals m farads a viscous damper with coefficient rho v can be replaced with a resistor with value of with value of resistance 1 over rho v ohms a spring of translational mechanical system with coefficient k can be replaced with an inductor with value of 1 over k henrys applied force of translational mechanical system will act as a current source and its value will be its value will be equal to f of t the velocity of translational mechanical system will equal to v of t will act as a node voltage in this conversion and by this we have converted our translational mechanical system into a par parallel analog electrical network dear students now we will study how to make a parallel analog of electrical network for a system from other discipline which is defined by more than one equations or having a degree of freedom greater than 1 we will study this we will study this from the example of translational mechanical system given in the figure components which are associated with the motion appear as parallel elements connected to a node components of adjacent motion are drawn parallel motion are drawn parallel electrical elements corresponding to two nodes 
In the given example, we have a system with degree of freedom equals to. The first point which can move is m1. Its motion is represented by x1 of t, by x1 of t. Second test point which can move is m2, and its motion is represented by x2 of t. Components attached to first point are spring with coefficient k1. Surface friction with the coefficient rho v1 with the coefficient rho v1. Components connected with second test point are spring with coefficient k3 and its surface friction rho v3. For first note, mass m1, spring with coefficient k1 and spring with coefficient k1 and surface friction rho v1 will be present as a parallel in first note. For second note, mass m2, spring with coefficient k3 and its surface friction rho v2 will appear as parallel will appear as parallel to second note. Now the components common between m1 and m2 which includes a spring with coefficient k2 and viscous temper with coefficient rho v3 these two quantities will appear Dear students, as this system is from last example, so we have its equation in force displacement form and then after conversion which includes multiplication and division of left side of both equation by Laplace operator S will convert into a desired velocity force form. Now after obtaining equations in desired form, we will make parallel analog circuit for this translational mechanical system with degree of freedom equals to. Dear students, now from the equation obtained in force velocity form, we will make our desired parallel analog of mechanical system, which is also shown in the figure. Now, as said earlier, this system has degree of freedom equals to. Now in transla translational mechanical system, all the impedances which are associated with first test point will occur as a parallel to the first node. Here we have first node which is V1 of T. Now with first test point, impedances associated are a spring with coefficient K1 and surface friction with coefficient rho V1. So these three quantities, mass M1, spring K1, and surface friction rho v1 appear as parallel to first node. Now with m m2 components associated are a spring with coefficient k3 and surface friction with coefficient rho v2. These three quantities mass with coefficient m2, spring with coefficient k3 and surface friction with coefficient efficient rho v2 will appear as parallel to the second node. Now the components common between M1 and M2 which includes a spring with coefficient K2 and a viscous damper with coefficient rho V3 both these components will be parallel to each other and will be common between two nodes. And with this we will make parallel analog electrical network for a given translational mechanical system whose degree of freedom is 2. Dear students, next topic we will study is non-linearities. Most of the systems that belong to real life are non-linear. And this course of control system engineering is based on controlling of linear systems. So for this, first we will study what are the properties of linear system which distinguish them from non-linear systems. Linear system possesses two properties. First one is superposition and second one is homogeneity. The property of superposition says that 
if we have a linear system and we apply various inputs let's say first we apply input r1 of t for which system yields an output of c1 of t then we apply an input r2 of t and for this system gave us an out gave us an output of c2 of t now we apply a third input which is sum of r1 of t and r2 of t for this system output must be equal to sum of c1 of t and c2 of t this is the linear property and this property is also demonstrated in the figure we have a linear system whose first input is r1 of t for which we have output of c1 of t then we have input of r2 of t and output of and output of c2 of t then we have an input which is equal to r1 plus r2 of t and whose output is equal to sum of previous outputs which is c1 of t plus c2 of t students now we will study homogeneity property of linear system this property says for any linear system if we have input r1 of t this will give us an output of c1 of t second if we multiply our input by any scalar then our output will also be scaled by the same number this is demonstrated in the figure for a system having original input we have a defined output now if input is multiplied by 2 or output is also scaled by 2 the property of superposition or additive and the property of homogeneity or scalar are observed in linear systems dear students now with the help of example we will study how to identify linear or a non-linear system if you look at the figure figure a represent graph for a linear system where figure b represent graph for a non-linear system now in figure a if you apply an input of 1 we have output of 0 0.5 if we have an input of 2 we have output of 1 and if we apply a third input which is sum of previous two means 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 3 for this we must have output of sum of previous two outputs which is 1 and 0 0.5 equals 1.5 and this is also clear from the graph that for an input of 3 we have output of 1.5 1.5 or we can say that output is half times the input or mathematically f of x is equal to 0 0.5 times x where x is the input of a system so this system fulfills the property of superposition property of superposition principle students now if we look at a graph b in this input of 1 yields an output of 1.5 where input of 2 yields output of 1.8 and if we apply a third input which must be 1 plus 2 equals 3 for this our output our output must be equal to 1.5 plus 1.8 which equals 3.3 .3. but if you see the graph its output is around 1.9 so this is this system is not following the property of superposition principle students now for same system we will check the property of homogeneity for a property of homogeneity input of 2 yields output of 1 now multiplying the input by a scalar equals 2 gives an input of 4 for this input we have output must be equal to 2 and from graph it is clear that for input of 4 our output is equal to 2 
and certainly the property of homogeneity doesn't apply to figure B. So our system A is a linear because it fulfills both properties of linear system where system in figure B is non-linear. Dear students, now we will study some physical non-linearities. In this we will study saturation, dead zone and backlash. These physical non-linearities are also represented in figure. First one we have is first one we have is saturation. Saturation mostly occur in amplifiers. If you look at the graph of amplifier for certain range of input you will get an linear amplified output but but when you exceed the operating range its output becomes saturated and system response is no more linear and this occurs for high input voltages next physical nonlinearity we have is dead zone is dead zone dead zone mostly occurs in motor when we apply a low input voltage then the desired excitation voltage the motor output is equal to zero due to frictional forces and no risk and no response from motor is achieved so for certain range of input system response or output is equal to zero this nonlinearity is known as dead zone last one we have is backlash backlash occurs in slash occurs in system with gears sometimes you hear a knocking sound from the gears this is because the gears are loosely fit or a gap exists between the gears for certain amount of time the gears are disconnected and are disconnected as suddenly you change the direction of rotation at the moment when gears are disconnected though you apply the input system do not respond and this is known as dear students now we will start linearization process to find out transfer function for a system the electrical and mechanical systems so far we have studied we assume that these are linear systems because because transfer function exists for linear systems only now to find transfer function for a nonlinear system we must linearize it after writing nonlinear differential equation for the system we will find out nonlinear component present in the present in the equation then we will linearize it for small signal input about a steady state solution in this actually we limit the operation of a nonlinear system to specific range and about this specific range system behaves behaves linearly when this small signal input is equal to 0 the steady state solution is called equilibrium and is selected as second step in the linearization process after identifying nonlinearity and equilibrium point of the system in next step we linearize the nonlinear differential equation after this we take laplace transform with zero initial condition to separate the input output variables variables and finally we reach to our desired transfer function dear students now with the help of example we will study the linearization process in figure a graph of a nonlinear system is shown and this nonlinear system is operating at point a and its values are x comma f of x comma f of x you can see this in the figure 
Now for linearization process, we will limit the operation of this nonlinear system to a specific range. Means a small change in input can be related to the small change in output by the way of slope of the curve slope of the curve at point A. Now the slope at point A is represented by MA. As system is operating at point x0, f of x, we will introduce a small change in input which is del of x and with this our new input and with this our new input will be x. The difference between x and x0 will be del x where difference between f of x0 and f of x will be del f of x. Now using point slope form we have a relation now using point slope form we have a relation f of x minus f of x naught is approximately equal to the slope multiplied by x and students this will be reduced to the relation del f of x approximately equal to m a del of x and this is our linear equation for the change in input to the change in output and this can be further expanded here the relation is shown graphically here where we have set of new axis del of x and del of f of x at point a and f of x is approximately equal to f of x naught the ordinate of our new origin plus small changes which is slope ma multiplied by del x away from the point a dear students the linearization process we studied earlier can also be performed using taylor series expansion in this the value of a function in terms of the value of that function at particular point the excursion away from that point and the derivatives evaluated at that point Taylor series is given here now we said that for linearization we will use small changes in input so higher order terms can be, ne can be neglected with this the resulting approximation yields a straight line relation between changes in function and excursions away from the x0. Now neglecting the higher order terms we get desired form which is similar to the previous case. Now changes in functional value are approximately equal to slope at that particular point multiplied by change in x this is a linear relationship between del f of x and del x for small excursions away from x naught dear students now we will study with the help of example how to linearize a non-linear ordinary differential equation of a system if you analyze the given ordinary differential equation the given system is non-linear due to presence of cos cos function in its ODE now we will linearize it about the point x equals pi by 4 as the process begins by introducing small change in input so here we suppose x equals del x plus pi by 4 4 where del x is small change about pi by 4 now substituting the value of x in the ordinary differential equation we get second equation of the slide but we know that derivative of constant is equal to 0 so the terms involving double derivative of del x plus pi by 4 divided by del t square will be equal to double derivative of del x and derivative of del x plus pi by 4 will be turned into derivative of del x 
and for this limited region of operation we will be having od given below now the nonlinear term cos of x can be linearized with the help of taylor series as discussed in next slide students the nonlinear term in this od was cos of x and the equilibrium point about which we have to linearize it is pi by 4 now we will use truncated taylor series and here f of x equals cos of del x plus pi by 4 where f of x naught will be equal to f of pi by 4 and x minus x naught equals del x and now substitute these values in the first equation of the slide now solving for solving for cos of del x plus pi by 4 we get cos of del x plus pi by 4 equals f of x naught which is equal to cos of pi by 4 plus slope which is minus sine pi by 4 4 whole multiplied by del x and this is equal to square root of 2 divided by 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2 multiplied by del x substituting this in the od obtained we get our desired nearest differential equation of the system and this od is valid for that specific region around pi by 4 Now if any of you have any questions please ask